Okay, so yesterday I was teaching sequence and series, and this is one of the first introductory questions I use, okay? And I asked my Calculus 2 students first to fill in the blanks, and then come up with an explicit formula, and try to come up with a recurrent, or well, sometimes it's called a recursive formula. Well, to fill in the blank, it's not bad at all. As you can see, we have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Of course, this one should be 9. And then on the bottom, we have 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, and this right here should be 19. And then similar pattern, right? So you just add one on the top and then add two on the bottom, like this and like that. And to come up with the explicit formula, it's not bad at all. So you can just say da da da. Well, as a convention, n is starting at 1. So from 1 to 4, from 2 to 5, 3 to 6, you can just add 3 to the n values. So the nth term is going to be n plus 3 on the top. And on the bottom, you see that when we have 1, this is 9. And then when we have 2, this is 11. When we have 3, this is 13. And notice that each every time, we just go up by 2, right? So a good way to do it is, you can just say, we will divide this by 2n. 2 is a common difference, right? And we'll have to just think about what number to add. Well, when n is equal to 1, plug into here, 2 times 1 is 2, and you need to end up with 9. Therefore, I need to plus 7. And that's pretty much it. That's the formula for this sequence. And if you don't trust this formula, just do it, just plug in another n value. For example, when n is equal to 5, 5 plus 3 is 8. And then plug in 5 into here, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 7 is 17. So this is the explicit formula. Anyway, uh, this is just an introductory question, and of course you can talk about the limit of this sequence and things like that, but that's later on. However, I always have the issue to talk about how to come up with a recursive formula for this sequence. And this is my typical joke, right? Because I will ask my student, okay, how can we go from 4 over 9 to 5 over 11? Do we just go ahead and say 4 over 9 plus 1 half, and that's equal to 5 over 11, like this. If this is the deal, the world will be so much better, right, for a lot of uh, students. <laughs> well, <laughs> of course, we cannot just add a fraction like this. So that's why I said we cannot just say we keep adding one half. And to come up with the explicit formula, you have to just do the top and then do the bottom separately, okay? But anyway, don't do this. So. I came up with this sequence on a worksheet back in 2015, and I never really think hard on how to come up with a recursive formula. And by the way, a recursive formula means that I want to come up with a formula so that I define the first term, namely a1 is equal to 4 over 9. This is clearly given 4 over 9. And I need to come up with the next a n, the next term. And this right here has to be based on the previous term, or maybe the previous, previous terms, okay? So that's the recursive formula. So this right here has to involve a sub n minus 1. Well, now here's the deal. From 4 over 9, how can we get to 5 over 11? It's not simply plus 1 half. And because it's not simply plus 1 half, so usually I'll just say, okay, uh, I don't want to do it. Let's just use this right here, right? Especially, this is much more useful because we can take the limit. We can plug in n is equal to 100 and things like that, right? Okay, so, however, yesterday, one of my students, when he heard that, I don't know how to do the recursive formula for this, somehow that fired him up. In fact, it fired up a lot of my other students as well. So they tried really hard. And in fact, one of the students was able to answer the question in one minute. So he just raised his hand, he told me the following, right? And let me just demonstrate how he did it. First of all, he just subtract, and you have to subtract fraction the correct way. So if you look at 5 over 11 minus 4 over 9, of course, to do this, you can just get the common denominator, and let's do it this way. Let's just multiply by 9 on top and bottom, and then multiply by 11. 11, and you will see that on the bottom is just 9 times 11. On the top, this is 45, and let me just, yeah, let me just work it out actually. 45 minus 44, which is equal to 1. And let me just write it down as 
1 over 9 times 11, okay? And if you do the third term minus the second term, namely 6 over 13 minus 5 over 11, as long as you subtract the fraction the right way. You can actually still see a nice pattern, okay? So to do this, let's just multiply by 11, top and bottom, multiply by 13, bottom and top, things like that. Okay, so right here, this is going to be 13 times 11. And in fact, let me just write down 11 times 13 so I can match what I did right here first, all right? So 11 goes first, the smaller number goes first, and then the 13 next. And then this is 66 minus 5 times 13, it's indeed 65. And you see that on the top, it's once again 1 over 11 times 13. And this is how we go from the first to second, which is you add 1 over 9 times 11, right? So let me indicate that right here. This is legit. You add 1 over 9 times 11. And then from the second to the third, we add 1 over 11 times 13. All right, 11 times 13. And then next, what do we add? Well, we can just add 1 over 13 times 15, right? 13 times 15. Let me just write this down right here for you guys, 13 times 15. And the next one, you can imagine, we have to add 1 over 15 times 17, okay? 15 times 17. Although, these numbers are not the same, but they do have a pattern, and this is how we can come up with a recursive formula, right? So, let me just write this down right here for you guys. I will put down my work here, so I have more space to write down everything. Here is the recursive, or sometimes people call this the recurrent formula, recursive formula. So, to do the recursive formula, or recurrent formula, you first, don't do this, you first draw the brace pretty, right, like this, make it pretty. You first write down the first term, namely a1 equal to 4 over 9, and then next, you are going to tell me how can we go to the next term based on the previous term. So, it seems that in order to get to the next term from a1, we can put down a1 first. So in that case, it is a sub n minus 1. And now, we are going to add, well, this is 1, right, on the top. It's always 1 on the top, so I'll just put down 1 on the top, over. The denominator, here we have 9 times 11. Well, to get to a second term, n is equal to 2. So now, when n is equal to 2, how can we get to 9? And also, how can we get to 11? And also, next, when n is equal to 3, you have to think about a formula for 11 and 13. And the answer is going to be, so we we'll have two factors, so let's put down parentheses. When n is equal to 2, you see that every single time it's going up by 2, right? So you can expect to have 2n, right? 2n. You see, because this 9 go up to this 11, and then go up to this 13. This is an arithmetic sequence based on 9, 11, 13, 15, and so on. So the difference is 2, put on 2n, and then you are going to ask yourself, plus what? When n is 2, 2 times 2 is 4 already. I need to have the 5 so that I can get the 9. Next, I need to produce the factors for 11, 13, 15, and so on. Once again, the factor, right, 11, 13, 15, 17, they are differ by 2. So that's an arithmetic sequence again. So it's 2n plus, well, 2 times 2 is 4. To get to 11, I just have to add 7. And this right here is it, right? And let me just make it pretty again for you guys. So this is how you get to the next term by based on, by based on the uh, previous term. And you have to say that this formula works when n is greater than or equal to 2. This right here is so pretty. In fact, I've been bothered by this question for two something years. So I find all these, well actually, <laughs> my students solve this, which is great. But the lesson to this is that don't be lazy. Whenever I come with a question, I should try to solve it rather than uh, give up. Rather than just make a joke and then just, oh, I don't know how to do it. So that's bad for me. So 
from here to here, we don't just add one half every single time. Every single time, we add this factor, all right? And of course, this is going to change based on the n value, and just to double check, right? So let's see how to get to a5, just for illustration purpose, right? So let's say a5. To get to a5, I need to know a4. So a4, I will, let's suppose we know this already, which is 7 over, what if I don't do a6? Yeah, this is more meaningful, n is equal to 6. So let's do a6. a6, which is, I need to know a5, which is 8 over 17. So this is the a5 value. And then we will add 1 over, remember, n is equal to 6, right? n is equal to 6. So I'll just put down 2 times 6, and then plus 5 times 2 times 6 plus 7. And assuming we can add fraction nicely, and let me erase this because you see this already. So now you see this is 8 over 17 plus 1 over. This is 12 plus 5, which is 17, and this is 12 plus 7, which is 19. And now I can just multiply this by 19 on the bottom and the top. Okay, it's kind of tough, but it's okay. This is 8 times 19 is, uh, I don't have my students to ask, so I have to do it on my own. 150, uh, let's put it down here actually. This is 152, and then plus 1 is 153, over 17 times 19. And how in the world is that the same as that? So I should be able to factor out uh, 17. So let's see if I can divide, so let's do this by hand. 153 divided by 17. Uh, 17 goes into this, 9 times. 9 times this is 9. Uh, 9 times 7 is 63, so it's exactly 153. We have no remainder. So that means this right here is the same as 9 times 17. Let's just put it down like this. And of course, we can cancel the 17. And finally, you see 9 over 19, which is exactly A6. Of course, we cannot cancel all the 9. So this right here is it. And Thanks so much, Ahu. That's his name, and he did a good job. <laughs> I was really happy. I was really surprised. You guys should have seen my reaction during the class. But yeah, this is the deal. So this is just a quick video dedicated to my Calculus 2 students, especially Ahu. All right, that's it.